Oh, oh. Rose and Claire, it's a real big pleasure to introduce you to and welcome you to the Singing Teachers Talk podcast. Now, Rose, I'm slightly disappointed with you, really, because me and Claire have turned up advocating for the fringe. <laughs> And yours is missing. <laughs> I know. I've swept it back when I know. I literally had all my hair chopped off and I'm still playing with what looks good. So <laughs> I'm on a swept back phase at the moment. No. Well, I think I fell out of the womb with a fringe. I've had one since I can remember. So I need but... a bit of a trim though, so <laughs> but do you trim yours yourself, Claire? I'm not that brave, but I, I yeah, I'm a just give it a go but um yeah, yeah. not yet it's not yet but maybe, maybe it's getting there yeah. <laughs> and, well rose you need to get yours back so we can be the fringe trio yeah. i know i know next time yeah. i'll schedule it in before oh. next time. <laughs> well there are more important things to discuss than fringes because you have a very exciting project on the go which is the southwest voice hub so rose can you explain what the southwest voice hub is and describe its mission yeah, so basically the Southwest Boys Hub is um, Claire and I's sort of idea born of this of this sort of wants to create a local network in the Southwest for all things voice related, really. Um, you know, it started off with um, Claire wanting a vocal coach to refer her speech language therapist clients to. And I said, that's great. That means I have a speech and language therapist to refer my vocal students to. Um, and then obviously the conversation sort of developed from there and was like, OK, this could go a bit further, actually. And maybe if we had some ENTs involved, maybe if we had more performers involved on that side of things. Um, and then, you know, this grew and grew. And then we started speaking to the lovely Stephen King, who is now based in the southwest in Devon who's obviously um, really knowledgeable around uh, laryngeal massage and all those those elements as well. And so the, the conversation kind of grew and then and then Southwest Boys Hub was kind of born. Um, and really, we, we want to build a network where we have lots of members from all of those different strands of the voice world that can access all these different practitioners. Um, when also being something that people can come to for, say, um, CPD opportunities um, and we can put on live events for people to do training or just, you know, learn a bit more about maybe performance if they're lacking confidence on stage. Um, it could be CPD for, you know, vocal coaches to learn more about. I don't know, anatomy, for example. So, um, yeah, we want to kind of be a, a resource and also, um, you know, and champion the talent in the Southwest kind of at the same time. So that's a rough overview, just if that makes sense. Yeah. And Claire, you are an SLT. And as Rose just mentioned, you wanted somebody to refer your patients over to. You're also a trained singer. So in your experience, what kind of influenced you to want to get involved in such a project as well other than wanting a referral position yeah so I think the you know the more I've you know I guess from my own um experience as a singer and also working with um patients who are experiencing voice difficulties um it's an understanding that actually rarely do these things happen in, in in kind of you know rarely will you be working on your own really I guess it's so important to work um holistically with with people and thinking about the, the broader picture so having um other professionals to refer on to um it is so helpful I think fundamental to any any kind of any kind of therapy work or, or otherwise so it came from that idea of feeling like um, wanting to have that network or directory of people that I could call and say actually I don't know if this is you know this particular piece of work here isn't in my is in, in my lane um, I'd really love to have your input on this and also having that shared learning that actually you know learning from each other so that we can take those things and put that into you know for me into my therapy therapeutic work um, and and kind of having that yeah generosity of, of skill sharing and knowing where to go um, when patients really kind of need that signposting so that was sort of what what I was sort of thinking about and I guess as Rose mentioned that was kind of where this came from then that feeling of 
you know, wouldn't it be great actually if this was wider and you know, the Southwest is, is obviously a huge geographical area, um, but having those kind of networks that are more local or, or more reachable um, than having to kind of, you know, travel or, or, or go kind of outside, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And Rose, if ever Trivial Pursuit comes out at a family event, my toes curl <laughs> if I'm landed with a geography question because my knowledge of <laughs> location is actually quite shameful. I once thought Budapest was in Turkey, even though I'm married to a part Hungarian. So that's always <laughs> rather embarrassing. Um, not great either, but... <laughs> oh, well, this is a great question for you. Then. <laughs> Hopefully you can help. <laughs> Can you help us to understand what is local for the South West mm. in the UK and why yeah. have you decided to dis like focus on this particular area? Yeah, so so really you're talking about I'm based in South Devon. Um, so obviously the county of Devon, South Devon, North Devon, which is where actually um, Stephen's based. And then we've got Cornwall, obviously, and then moving up towards we've got um, we sort of probably would reach us to where stop around where Clare is in Bristol. So you've got the whole of Bristol there involved as well. And then you've got Dorset down towards the coast and Somerset as well. So you've got quite a lot of counties um, involved there. And, and I think the reason that we, we sort of wanted to make it a Southwest thing was, was largely because in discussion, you know, we, it materialized that we know that people in this area, you know, especially, um, when we're talking about people that are professionals, you know, the assumption is, well, there isn't any decent ENTs that know about the voice down here. There isn't any decent blah, blah, blah that knows about the voice and singers down here. Everybody's in London and and all the people that get recommended to people are London, Manchester and, you know, um, which, you know, obviously because there are a lot of people in those cities and there's a lot of experience in those cities and that's where people do naturally gravitate. So it's understandable that that would be the case. But at the same time, we wanted to try and, dig out those people that must be here somewhere um, and make them known, you know, to the area. And, you know, that's an opportunity for us to, like I said, kind of champion what we have here in the Southwest, um, make it some, you know, make it um, something that people can access more easily, whether that's financially, because, you know, it may be that London prices for both the clinic and to travel there from the Southwest end up costing a fortune for people that might not be as accessible. Um, so yeah so, so that side of things as well I think is, is worth considering um and you know just from moving down this I mean I'm from Cornwall originally actually um but I now live in Devon but I lived um up in the south uh, east um in the Surrey area worked in London you know for about 10 years um you know and moving back here sort of now getting to sort of know sort of the other professional singers and stuff like myself and doing the job that I do um you know, and knowing the level here is the same, you know, I'm, I'm now, uh, yes, there may not be quite as many people and etc. But you know, there, there's some really talented musicians down here and really knowledgeable people and coaches and, and there, there is some good stuff going on down here. It's taken me time though to meet those, that has taken time. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully by doing something like this, it can kind of accelerate that network and, and, and then widen it out to everybody to be able to access. To celebrate a little bit of that scene, can you tell us, Rose, about the music that you're seeing in the Southwest, the artists that you're working with, the singers that you see in your studio? Yeah, so, man, I, I see lots of lots and lots of different people, you know, from um, people that maybe are coming to, I get this quite a lot, sort of people in their maybe 50s and 60s who sort of like have never done the singing thing because they've been too scared. That's really common. Um, so I have hobbyists like that just start, you know, doing a bucket list thing, quite frankly. Um, so I get people from that end to people that are professionals moving up that are maybe in their late teens um, and are extremely serious. And, you know, I'm going hard with vocal health, you know, people in rock bands, not necessarily looking after themselves, maybe um, and things like that. You know, I have that quite a lot. Um, but absolutely really talented. Like, a, you know, some of these examples, I've been out to see their shows and they are great. You know, they're at a really good level and they're working really hard. Um, you know, uh, I work for the Barbican Theatre over in Plymouth on their young people's programme. That's like 15 to 27-ish age age range. Um, and they're all, they're all developing young artists that are singer-songwriters wanting to, you know, be in the industry creating their own music. Um, 
so yeah and and there's a lot of talent there's a lot of talent and um you know and people sort of similar age to me that have been doing it a long time that are still gigging their music on the circuit as well like the standard's really really high it's great mm -hmm. it's really lovely yeah and how about you claire what sort of patients are you seeing in your clinic in in bristol right yeah i, I think with um working with people who are experiencing voice difficulty so it might be that you're working with professional voice users so in that sense you know um people who are using their voices as professional singers and actors but also people who are using their voices um in their everyday jobs so I guess teachers and um other kind of um people facing roles um and I think you know, although I'm I'm not doing as much singing and gigging um, within Bristol, there's there's a really big music scene, and I think that's part of of what we wanted to mm. you know, um, reach out to. So that so I think it's it's making that kind of directory of um, whoever you need, whenever you need it, for all things voice, really visible. Um, because I also think that you know, if a, a performer or an artist gets gets you know to a point where they're having some difficulties with their voice it's it's wanting to make those um services um as as accessible as as possible and obviously within all of the regions there are um really good nhs serv services operating but i guess it's also you know recognizing that people might need different things or they might want to access different things so um with voice coaching or vocal massage or even thinking about um other types of therapy so um i've gone completely off on a tangent here but <laughs> <laughs> um i guess i you know all different type kind of um people that I meet sort of with it within a clinical role but I think particularly we want to think about those people who are using their voices in and, and have a lot of demand on their voice um mm. so you know for for people to sort of be able to recognize when they might need a little bit of extra support or when to sort of think you know to be really sort of tapping into how they're feeling in their voice use whether it's feeling tired or whether it's uh, feeling um you know effortful so I guess um in that sense lots of different people but I'm particularly interested in um yeah professional voice users I guess because of my background great obviously because Claire's from a singing background and performing background it's just it it makes total sense and in terms of her knowledge from that side of things as well as well as her speech and language therapists obviously um skills it's just it's great to have have her have come from that angle as well and be able to um again like this is what we we often find singers want isn't it they, they want to go to a a clinic or specialist that does understand the voice from a performing perspective and you know i think that's what's what uh, what's great and because Claire has that and she's also interested in that so it it, it feeds in really nicely to what we're doing mm. and, and of course cool. Stephen King has opened up a or is about to open up mm. another voice care center based in Devon yeah. so was that quite handy to know that there was something like that opening up that maybe Southwest Voice Hub could be connected to I know that Stephen King mm. is going to be doing something at your launch event which we'll come on to in just a yeah. bit but does that help are there something like that coming in the southwest too yeah yeah I think definitely it does and and but it was it was kind of funny it was a weird kind of sort of um serendipitous moment I suppose because actually it was not long after Claire and I had first started talking about this that Stephen King even came on my radar I just happened to tap into the podcast on here with you Alexa about help the book um help I've got a voice problem that you did and Claire and I had already started talking about the voice hub but like I said it wasn't ever so long before that probably and then um he mentioned Devon in the in the chat and I was like oh does he know Devon? <laughs> <laughs> and I said to Claire I think I should reach out to this guy <laughs> and so yeah it sort of materialized from there really and we're, yeah we're just that's just really fortunate for us yeah yeah oh, great and it's yeah great isn't it I guess then you know accessing Stephen and accessing his center you know in terms of of for everybody in the southwest for that to be yeah. more reachable. as a signpost yeah. yeah you've obviously teamed up together for this network so Claire how did you know that 
Rose would be a good teammate and then Rose how did you know that Claire was going to be a good teammate this, this is totally an opportunity for you to bitch about each other or, <laughs> or to say lovely things um, oh well Rose and I have known each other for a really long time so we used to sing in the same band together um and you know have yeah been friends and worked together in that in that capacity for a long time and actually it's been so nice because um I suppose in that sense, vocally we don't we don't get to sing together anymore as much as much together anymore. So working together on this has been really lovely because I think I or I moved to um like Bros. I was in the southeast, I was in London for a long time and then moved to Bristol about seven years ago. Mm. So I think um that has been really nice sort of to know that like, actually that starting that that connection. Um and she was, you know, always brilliant to work with and it's a fantastic singer and, vo and voice coach so in that sense it's it was always a pleasure so this has been yeah a nice kind of new new project to to begin together yeah yeah definitely I, I, I just second that um obviously you know yeah we've worked together a really long time and Claire's very professional and easy to work with and good fun and all those things you know you, you just sort of know that you've got you know someone that you you can you can trust and you can sort of say anything to and you know, and you're not going to take offence to someone that disagrees with an idea you have. Do you know what I mean? That's so important yeah. in these things. And yeah, no, it's it's been it's really been really brilliant to to reconnect. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I, I mean, also like thinking about generally sort of the way the project management and actually, yeah, this Rose is like great at like socials. You're great, and I'm absolutely awful. I'm also learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure I'm great at in it. Terms but... of, <laughs> in terms yeah. of, um, I guess, you know, um, working to our own kind of, you know, preferred ways of working and strengths. And it's, it's you know, it's that kind of of um, project working that we're doing together as well. Yeah, which is yeah. Really great. Yeah. yeah. So the network itself, is it going to be mainly based online with some in-person events? Is it webinars can you tell us a little bit more about how the network is going to kind of function rose uh yeah okay so um so ultimately the the events that are taking place i guess are primarily online in as much as they're going to be um we're going to have bi-monthly online forums so we had our first one yesterday which was really brilliant um and that was an opportunity for people um to learn really more about what we who we are um and also get ideas from them in terms of what gaps they feel are missing in terms of whether it's a referral network whether it's in terms of maybe um practitioners that they just don't know of down here like like for me i'm like really wanting to do a shout out this is my opportunity shout out to any ent's especially with singing uh, experience <laughs> in the south yeah. west yeah. um so you know sort of get some feedback from other people in the area and also connect students from them you know um we've got some really great names from some of them of people we should contact that are already doing some really great stuff down here um so yeah so that went really well but you know the purpose of those bi-monthly forums are also for anybody in the network as a member can just jump on that call and you know ask any questions maybe it's a vocal coach with um, a student with a specific problem that they just don't know how to to sort out and someone they might be able to get advice from another vocal coach so like a shared practice situation um, or it could be a singer maybe that maybe they don't have vocal coaching at all and maybe they can't afford to but maybe if they jump on the call, they can ask a vocal coach for some some nugget of, you know, gold that's going to help their voice in some way. If, if, if they're saying, oh, why is my voice doing this or or whatever? So 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 that's kind of the, the thought behind the the online um, forums. You know, it may be that some of them have, are a bit more topical, like it was yesterday, you know, depending on what we feel obviously um, needs covering, depending on what people are, are reaching out about. Um, so so we have those by monthly and then. Um, and then we want to have sort of one or two in person. Again, it will come down to demand probably, but one or two in person, um, sort of yeah, sort of seminar type things, I guess, live events, um, in person training, um, where where we have the opportunity to put on sort of C CPD events, etc. Um, yeah, and and really respond to the demand of the network. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And Claire, I'm guessing that some of this will be open to others who aren't based in the Southwest, but it's it's a celebration of what's happening down in that 
particular area of the country but say somebody who's in Edinburgh wants to join the the CPD or come and join a discussion they can they're welcome Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I think we, in terms of kind of, me of terms of kind of membership, um, I guess you know we want to sort of you know promote the sort of idea of good voice um, use, and 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 um, there's no reason, I guess, why that should should be limited um, to to kind of the southwest area. So I guess we want to promote that message. Um, so absolutely, and and I, I guess you know. It, if we've got anybody sort of from different kind of specialisms within voice wanting to get in touch with us about in-person training that we can deliver kind of locally in the southwest that's also something that we you know we're hoping to kind of explore as well like you said Alexa if we're putting on a CPD workshop and someone yeah. you know was desperate to learn from that like that's absolutely fine like we have you know yeah. for the launch event again which we'll talk about in a minute you know we we have a a prize for non-members you yeah. know so if, if you're not yeah. a member there's no reason why someone from Edinburgh couldn't book on and, and attend that that's not a problem um but at the moment we're seeing the actual membership as such where it, where our network exists um at the moment I think we're focusing on the, on the yeah. south west particular for that does that I, make sense I, I think the reason for that really being that I guess it's it will be with the idea of being kind of um services within your area within your local mm. area. of course lots of things are remote and online now so there there is no real reason why you know somebody that's like the country can't access you know an, um if a you know a particular service if it's online but I guess yeah they're kind of the I guess the essence of the kind of membership we're thinking locally um but actually in terms of cpt opportunities yeah there's no reason why somebody who's who's not a member and wants to kind of come along will always have a non-member rate mm -hmm. who can access that training yeah yeah great yeah. and rose can you talk to us a little bit more about the memberships and what mm. somebody might get from those and how much they'll be yeah sure so we've got sort of three tiers if you like so on the one count we've got um um like practitioner membership so much like what me and Claire will be within the network. So vocal coaches, voice practitioners, um, people that are able to offer a service to any vocalist, basically. Um, and that will be £25 for a year. They're all annual. Um, within that £25 um, membership, you get um, access to a closed um, Facebook group where you can troubleshoot with each other whenever you like. Um, you get access to all the bi-monthly forums. Um, you get a 20% discount on any of our CPD events. And you also get, um, obviously, a profile on our members um, section of our website so that people can obviously advertise their services within the network as well. Um, yeah, so it's only £25 a year. It's just really to cover our costs. You know, this isn't something that we're doing as a business idea as such. It's it's a service, So, but we just wanted to cover our costs, really. So, so we've set that at £25 for a year for a practitioner. And then we move on to singers. So if you're um, sort of just going to join as a, as a singer and performer and you want to access these people, um, it's um, similar, apart from obviously you're not going to be advertising any services. So it's really about you'll be able to access our um, Facebook group. You'll be able to join the bi-monthly forums. Um, you'll have access to the members area where all of the practitioners will be. And um, you'll also get the 20% uh, off the CPD. And then the final one is exactly the same as singers, but students. So if you're at a college, a school, a university, um, then it's just £10 instead of £15. Um, otherwise, you get the same benefits as the singers do. Hey you, if you're enjoying the Singing Teachers Talk podcast, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We are committed to bringing you engaging conversations and valuable insights from experts across the field of voice. By subscribing, it means we can continue to do that. You'll never miss an episode and you'll be helping to spread the word to other singing teachers, vocal coaches and overall voice nerds. So subscribe to this channel now and just watch your teaching grow. And Claire, you are, as a SLT, you have insurances and, and things that you have to have in place to do the work that you do. So for practitioners who are coming on board, who might be interested to join, is there like a vetting process? Do you, are you asking for any um, evidence or insurances before they can join your membership? 
with speech and language therapists, we're um, yeah, part of the Royal College for Speech and Language Therapy um, and also registered with the um, HCPC, so Healthcare Professionals Council. So from that point of view, I guess for any therapist wanting to get involved, yeah, we will sort of, yeah, want to be doing mm-hmm. a little bit of um, due diligence there in terms of um, registration. Um, and I guess similarly with any um, practicing medical professionals, so in the ENT, um, and I guess that's also, you know, something that um, will be, yeah, mindful of and, and and kind of aware of. And um, because we, we, you know, we do want to um, be able to um, prov- providing people with with, you know, good, good quality services. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you know, as a, as ever, really, you know, I guess um, everybody to kind of, yeah, be, be mindful of that when they're accessing services themselves as well in terms of you know um certain governing bodies that um as as kind of health professionals we should be we should be kind of registered with um yes so I think you know might be something piece of work there for us to be thinking about in terms of how we manage that depending on our um members and our membership um um uptake with with other areas of voice Mm -hmm. and I guess that is really why you know um keeping it keeping it kind of local is also another really good point that means that we can also be checking in with our kind of local community and our on our colleagues in the southwest Mm -hmm. and our, our members and and taking on that feedback yeah, great. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything to add about about that, right? But yeah, um, yeah. Oh, well, I was just gonna say, yeah, um, yeah, totally. I think that's a really good point, and you know, we we absolutely um, want to maintain, yeah, really good quality for lots of reasons, of course. But um, on the website, we do have on the the, the join the network um, page on the website, and at the bottom of that, there's a little application we've put in place for for practitioners, so we can read about um who they are and what they've done and what credentials they've got as well so if if practitioners out there do want to get in touch with us they can pop onto that and um just just fill in the little online form it's really short um to give us um an overview of what their experience is etc yeah and as you look to the future for Southwest Voice Hub and the the webinars and the CPD events that you want to put on, do you have an idea of how that might look, who you might want to invite, the topics that you might cover, Claire? Yeah, I mean that we had actually, you know, we've got our own sort of ideas, but we also had some great ideas yesterday um, from our first forum. So I suppose we're thinking about things like, um, I guess, generally thinking about, yeah, voice anatomy and how the voice works and kind of good uh, vocal care. Um, and then um, we had some really good ideas yesterday about particular vocal techniques. So um, thinking about how, whether we can get some um, experts in to, to, to train and del- deliver that in particular approaches to the voice. Um, we're also talking a lot yesterday about kind of a whole body approach, you know, how, you know, actually, you know, um, in terms of um, performance and, and voice connection and actually lots of different sort of um, often kind of other therapies influencing the voice and how, you know, it's, as I said, sort of briefly touched on earlier, it's it's rarely in, in silo, you know, there's kind of lots of other things we want to be thinking about. Um, so that was a little bit of a food for thought yesterday. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's kind of where, where we're sort of at at this stage, but we're really keen for our network to lead us in that mm-hmm. sense so actually to, the, you know if there's a particular demand for a particular type of um approach or technique then we'd really love to hear about it because then we can start doing the work to find somebody to, to kind of um come in and do some in-person training yeah the only other thing i'll add on that is actually um we talked about um we've already had a little bit of interest around um some singers that would be interested in doing like a um vocal coach training day so do a bit of a teacher training day basically so we we mentioned that as well yesterday so it could be that we just have an event that gives people a few tools to get them started with teaching singers themselves as well so it's things like that yeah yeah great and you have a, a launch event happening in Exeter on Tuesday the 8th of October so can you tell us a little bit more about that and how we can maybe come along to that Rose? 
Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, we're really excited about it. And, and as we sort of touched on earlier, the, the, um, we've got Stephen being our, um, Stephen King um, coming to be our sort of special guest for the day. And he's going to put on um, a laryngeal massage workshop um, for, for the event. So that's kind of the main um, the, the main workshop that's happening. Um, within that as well, we're going to um, finish off the day as well with like an open, open like vocal triage. Um, so if there are any singers there that maybe haven't accessed um, voice training or singing lessons before in the past, or maybe they just haven't done it in a long time and their voices maybe changed and they kind of would like someone to have a little listen to their voice and, and see if they can pick out anything that, you know um could help them or um yeah like I said if someone's never had voice training before you know it might be that I just say okay well this is the sort of voice I think you have and these are the sort of things that might help you if you were to reach out to a voice coach and and be able you know th then your voice may be able to develop in this way and kind of explain a little bit about that so so we're going to have that tagged on to the end of the day as well for people to access um obviously we're going to explain a lot more about who we are and what we're doing um within the day as well um, and then there'll also be um, like a network social um, section of the end of the day as well, where we'll head into the bar and, and have a good chat and with each other and, um, yeah, and, and have a little networking event to finish off the day as well. But it's, it's happening from 11 o'clock till 6 p.m. Um, and it's at the Exeter Phoenix Centre, um, which is very central Exeter. Um, really super easy to, to reach um, via train as well. Um, so... Yeah, and it's a lovely venue. I've been there many times for various things. So, um, yeah, we're very excited. Yeah. And Claire, do you, is there a ticket price? Do, how do we get involved with, with coming along? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we are promoting that at the moment. It will be on our socials, on Instagram, um, and hoping to set up um, a page, an Eventbrite page hopefully for that so there's a rate for members and non-members so probably the easiest way to find out a bit more at the minute is either via um instagram or via our website so get get in touch and drop us a drop us a, an email um mm -hmm. at the top of my head <laughs> yeah non-member i can remember it yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah so the non the non-members price is 112 and the uh and then it work then if you've got a membership with us 20 percent off it works out at 89.90 uh to come along so actually it's probably cheaper for most people to get the membership first because that affects their ticket price accordingly yeah great yeah yeah and so this really is the celebration of the southwest and so i just wonder as practitioners we touched on it at the beginning how much do you feel like your role in your jobs has been impacted by the location that you live in, whether that's through an imposter syndrome or a frustration of the services that you feel are available to you or a public perception of musicians that aren't in like a central London place? What do you feel about mm -hmm. that, Rose, in, in, in both your roles as like a singer and a, and a coach? Yeah, certainly. So, so definitely, I think when I first moved here, I felt a lot of pressure to heavily reduce my fees, first of all. So that was an adjustment in term, from a business point of view, for sure. Um, you know, and I think, you know, part of that is is the responsibility that you have to build a reputation, of course, in the area or etc. Um, to to warrant, you know, for want for a better word, you know, charging um, accordingly. But um, yeah, so there is an element of that, definitely. Um, and I think and also when I did sort of start setting up, um, you know, my private practice grew and, and I sort of, you know, um, got a lot busier. I did start then reaching out to ENTs, et cetera, that I could refer people on to. And there was frustration around that, actually, for sure, because I like I said before, that's something I really struggled with, um, you know, even finding just ENTs generally. Um, nearby that you know were in the NHS and privately and available I think one I found was on a sabbatical for a year at the time but you know um but I don't think they were necessarily even you know um okay with working with singers anyway so so there is a frustration around that um certainly um and you know and I think from our forum yesterday as well which from a singer's perspective yes there's definitely 
<clears throat> one a little bit of the imposter thing in terms of um if you're not in London then you're obviously not professional enough you know there is there's certainly that um and I know from you know one of our people in the network that was online with us yesterday that's something that they actually raised you know I don't want to move to London I don't want to live there mm. but you know I know her already she's an absolutely outstanding singer you know and um she but she doesn't want to live in London and I can see the frustration there that you know she as well you know she wants people to you know come here to look for for talent and to offer offer those big jobs you know it doesn't take long for us to jump on a train you know I mean I'm in South Devon so it's less than three hours on the train from Totnes to Paddington you know it's not it's you know I could get to London very easily so it's not it's not you know um out of the question to book someone in the southwest for a job in London still you know yeah so it is, it is difficult it is difficult definitely yeah and how about you Claire what have you found yeah, I think it's probably just that visibility, actually, you know, just just, I guess, um, be, you know, uh, you know, be, being able to sort of easily access um, places and, and, and professionals. And also I'm thinking as well, um, a lot of our working lives have changed, haven't they? And I guess, you know, for um, even outside of of um, the arena of, kind of performers and artists that actually lots of um lots of people are changing in terms of where they live so actually you know a lot of, there's probably just been a big shift hasn't there I guess after COVID in terms of like lots more people are able to work from home and and, and I think even in in the performance world you know being able to kind of um do more kind of um video auditions and things like that so I I, I think the picture I guess has changed in that sense perhaps so um maybe this is all sort of I guess part of that of then kind of building on um that kind of movement of people into different areas and and different regions and I guess yeah for 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 all of those services to become yeah more visible and more reachable and I guess that that's the thing because you know then when when you really need support when you're in a moment where you need that help um you want to just be able to kind of find someone don't you and and I guess you know there's a time where there are lots of waits for different services um and I think that's also something you know that that can be really frustrating and also um challenging for people when they want to reach somebody quickly and the demand for lots of different services within health and and I guess you know outside of that as well is 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 perhaps higher so I guess thinking about that, that there's that there's a lot in there I think in terms of the network as well um that people don't feel like they aren't kind of being supported by anybody. So I think that's that's the that's probably the work of kind of a bit of a directory of where to find other professionals, but also with memberships. So I guess that support that you get from a community of of um of other performers or artists that you can kind of you know people kind of can can make their own oh you know I had this and this really helped me and you know I guess just a little bit of that signposting within the network mm. yeah I, I can't stand going to London I'm, <laughs> yeah I'm kudos to everything that goes on in terms of you know the brilliant theatres and everything but oh, yeah God, I'm very glad when I get home into some form of the country <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, you just feel how lonely it must be like living in a city I know people find it a big buzz but no it's not for me I want to be yeah. with the deer <laughs> yeah well, that's it and you don't you don't want to be penalized for that do you <laughs> I think you also sometimes want to have those you know um you want to have that build that rapport don't you and I think sometimes mm -hmm. you it's that it's that kind of trust that you might have with your speech therapist or your vocal coach mm -hmm. or your massage therapist that you want to be able to um that you know that's a massive part of that dynamic mm -hmm. so I guess you know if you're having to kind of travel or that expensive actually getting to London from Bristol really isn't very far but it's really expensive mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it's not that you you know not maybe necessarily going to be able to do that each mm -hmm. week but perhaps mm -hmm. being able to you know access somebody in the nearby area and have that kind of ongoing rapport with is is really valuable so yeah. yeah and and actually something that came up yesterday you know with with our chat with the forum was you know people definitely still want the in-person thing you know so leading on from like like you were saying Claire you know people a lot of people have moved down here since Covid and there's a lot of online stuff going on but from by all accounts from yesterday you know 
oh, everything's online, you know, really, we really want some in-person stuff happening as well. So that was really good feedback for us in terms of, well, that's great that we're going in the right direction by still trying to offer that, you know. Well, Claire and Rose, I wish you all the very best for the growing network. Can you just remind us where we can check it out and what your social media handle is? Yes, sure. So our website is www.southwestvoicehub.com um, and our email address is southwestvoicehub at gmail.com. And then, um, yes, it'd be great if you follow us on Instagram to keep up to date with things. Uh, and that is at Southwest Voice Hub. Great. Well, all that there is left to say is, Rose, get your fringe back and <laughs> <laughs> Southwest Voice Hub, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Alexa. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Do, do, do.